Thank you for purchasing the FMK Flow Monitoring Kit by Neptune Systems, and welcome to the Get Started video. Here's what should be in your box. FM module, two half-inch flow sensors, four half-inch BSPT to slip fittings, one one-inch flow sensor, two one-inch BSPT to slip unions, and one three-foot aquabytes cable not shown in this picture. Please do not pick up the flow sensors by their wires as this can damage the flow sensors. If you're not comfortable with plumbing in your sensors, it would be recommended that you have a plumber or an aquarium professional install the flow sensors for you. Note that all our flow sensors have BSPT threads. BSPT stands for British Standard Pipe Tapered and are not compatible with NPT threads. This means that you will not be able to just go down to your local hardware store in the US or Canada and get plumbing fittings that will attach to the threads on the flow sensors. This is why we have included the fittings and unions in the FMK kit. The reason we went with slip fittings in the kit is this way you can connect multiple different types of fittings to your current plumbing system. Example. You can attach a piece of pipe to the slip fittings, or you can attach fittings like barb, female pipe thread, and male pipe thread. Attaching the plumbing fittings to the flow sensor, it is recommended to use a thread sealer paste to prevent water leaks. Thread sealer tape can only be used on the half inch flow sensors, but if you're installing a one inch or a two inch flow sensor, it is mandatory to use the non sealing thread sealant such as Rector Seal 5, and it is best to use this on all our sensors. Teflon tape or PTFE paste should not be used on the larger fittings. The quarter inch flow sensor uses a compression fitting so no sealant is needed on these sensors. When using the thread sealer paste, you can apply it to either the ends on the flow sensor and the female threads on the unions. Only apply the sealant to the first four to five threads of the female and male fittings. But you do not want to use an excessive amount. More is not always better here. When planning out the placement of your flow sensor, you want to make sure that you do not install the flow sensor in line with anything that can clog or obstruct the flow sensor. For example, it would not be wise to have the flow sensor installed on the output of the biopellet reactor that way the waste particles do not clog the sensor. Instead, it would be best to install the sensor on the input side of the reactor to avoid this. When installing the sensors, it is important to notice the direction of flow indicated on the housing of the flow sensors shown in these pictures. If the sensors are not installed correctly, this could affect the reading that the flow sensor sends to the FMM. The flow sensors are water resistant and will withstand an occasional splash or drip, but they are not waterproof. For the best resistance to such splashes and drips, when installing, orient them so that the point where the cable enters into the body of the flow sensor is pointing down, and if possible, also give the cable some slack so that you are not putting any strain onto that cable. All the flow sensors come with a cable that is 16 feet long. This should be ample for most installations. If that length is insufficient, position the FMM closer to the flow sensor and use a longer Aquabus cable as needed to connect to the FM module and the APEX system. Neptune Systems does not recommend attempting to extend the flow sensor cable in any way. At this point, it would be helpful to take the time to label the end of the flow sensor cables with the correct size of each specific flow sensor. This will be beneficial when setting up the FMM and for any troubleshooting needed down the road. Mount the FMM with your other modules and make sure that the flow sensor cables can reach to the module. Please do not attach the sensors or the Aquabus cable to the FMM yet. It is important that your Apex base unit must be running the latest firmware and web pages 4.51 or higher to be able to support the FMM module. If you are unsure on how to update firmware and web pages for an Apex Classic, Lite, or Junior system, here is a YouTube video link to watch a different video on how to do this.
Now plug in the AquaBus cable to the FMM and you should get a green solid status light. Log into the classic dashboard and navigate to the configuration drop down menu. Then click on the module setup and look towards the bottom of the page to see if the FMM shows old or OK. If the FMM shows old, then update the module by selecting it in the upper left drop down menu. Make sure that the modules that you want to update are now being displayed in the center of the screen. Select the update firmware then click on Submit Module Change. You'll notice below the progress of the module update. Now the FM module firmware should show OK. Now that we have updated the module, we can plug in each of the sensors into their individual ports. In the classic dashboard, navigate to the configuration drop down menu. Then click on the module setup. And then in the upper left hand corner in the drop down menu, choose the FMM module. Now you'll need to configure each port one at a time. Note all flow sensors default to one inch. If you labeled the cables like we recommended earlier, this will make this part a little easier to identify what size flow sensor you have into what port on the FMM. In our diagram earlier, port one was a quarter inch sensor. Select the quarter inch from the drop down menu, then click on port one button to configure it. The port two was a half inch sensor. Select the half inch sensor from the drop down menu, and then click on the port two button. Port three was a one inch sensor. This is by default one inch, so there is no need to change it. If nothing is plugged into the FMM, the port default sensor is water on floor. You can choose on how you would like the flow rate to be displayed, either in gallons per hour or liters per hour. By default, it will be gallons per hour. Now navigate to the unused tile bin and select that icon. Now you'll see the flow sensor tiles for the flow sensors that you have connected to the FMM module. You can now drag and drop the tile onto your dashboard. Go ahead and close the unused tile bin by selecting the padlock icon one more time. To set up an email alarm for your flow sensors, click on the gear icon next to the email outlet on the dashboard. When programming outlets in Fusion, there is an advanced editor that will help you autofill your programming. All you need to do is type in the first letter of the command and it will show you all valid programming. The programming that I am doing here says if the flow sensor on port 2 of the FMM on address 4 detects a flow greater than 110 then turn on the email alarm or if that same flow sensor has less than 90 gallons per hour going through the flow sensor to turn on the email alarm. Once I have programmed the email alarm, I select save and then OK and it has been configured. Note, when you're looking at your flow sensor graph in Fusion and you say in your head, I thought my pump was supposed to pump X amount of gallons per hour and the flow graph is showing something different, why would this be? You need to remember that the gallon per hour number that a pump manufacturer gives on a product does not take in consideration pipe fittings like 90 degrees, 45 degree angles, T's. All these things add up and cause reduction in the flow, just like the pipe length and a vertical height all create head pressure and turbulence that will reduce the flow on the flow sensor. The key here is to look for trends. Thank you for purchasing the FMK. Now that you have your flow sensors installed and your FMMs mounted and configured, you are ready to gather more data about your flow in your aquarium. I'm sure that you'll find that our control freak users out on the forums are going to come up with some unique ways to use the flow sensor and that information. If you need any support, first thing we can do is have you go into neptunesystems.com, either hover or click on support. 
This will drop down a menu and click on Contact Support. In this menu, scroll to the bottom and fill out the form here. We'll start with your first and last name, email, phone number, and a few information regarding the APEX and the date of purchase and a few other items. Please then in the subject line, let us know the problem you're having and then a detailed description so we can better help you. Thank you.